Right, it's cold outside today, so I thought I'd come in and have a look at the carburettors for the KS600. Uh, there's two types for this. There's the Amel M Amel Fisher, which is the uh, metric German version. Um, so the original one up to, I think, probably about 5,000 bikes was the M76446, uh, which was a one inch carb, uh, 140 main jet and a 6.4 slide. And then the more common one that you find are these two, which is the uh, M76451, which is a 24 millimeter, um, which is a, about 15 sixteenths and with a 115 jet compared to the 140 of the 446 version. Um, a number two needle clip and a six stroke three slide. So that's these two here. Um, so essentially they're, a, from what I can work out, they're almost identical to the AML 76 stroke Imperial 276 English version. Uh, so most things, I was curious about the parts for these because these things, first of all, are really expensive. They're, you know, these carbs are anywhere from about 400 to six, 700 quid each. So fairly pricey and finding jets and things does not appear to be that easy. The, the most of them are M, I don't know, M5, M6, something like that. So obviously you can find ammo parts in the UK particularly or in most countries actually, um, thanks to all the BSAs and AJSs and all that kind of thing kicking around. Um, so let's start with the float. So it's a straight float chamber and it's marked on it, Fisher, as you can see there. So there's no degree bend to it. Let's have a look at the actual float size. I'm measuring this because if anybody's got an imperial version, I'd be curious to know whether the um, the standard British uh, 76 float chamber fits. So here we go, 41.2. And that way we have got 38.6. So. If anyone knows if the has gotten a, a British one, if they wouldn't mind measuring it and leaving a comment, I'd be interested to know for spare parts. So I've bought a new slide, which is about 29.95 millimetres, which luckily is the same size as the British Imperial one. They both fit perfectly. So that's an easy part to find. Uh, the other bits just seem to be fine. You can tap them out if you want to, to a metric thread, or you can find these tops, which again fit nicely. So it's really the jets and the sort of main screw threaded parts that are the issue. So here we've got the jet block, um, although weirdly enough on both of these carbs, you can insert even a metric version or an imperial version. They're both sliding, screwing quite nicely. So I'm guessing the threads are just that worn. And then we've got a load of um, metric main jets here. And again, strangely enough on a couple of them, I've got one imperial and one metric and they both go into one jet block on the other one they don't. Here's a couple of jets that I've actually made because I can't find a metric jet in the UK. So I'm gonna go make a few of those and I'll fiddle around with them. And on the jet subject actually, um, they've obviously got the numbers written on them, like 140 obviously. The 446 takes a 140 main jet and the 451 takes a 115. So I was curious, um, a bit of time to kill as to you know the jet hole as to whether that's the, is it's supposed to be the cc's i think um of fluid that flows through it in a given time I'm not sure what that given time is but i'm guessing a minute or something so i knocked up a little rig here to actually so you can screw a jet on the end of it he says there you go screw one on the end of there and then measure how much fluid flows, flows through it and if it's a minute, which I'm guessing it probably is, I don't know, maybe somebody knows. If you can, leave a comment so I'd be curious. Um, this has to be almost a metre long to get the fluid flow to match roughly what the jet says. So if you want 130 cc through it in one minute, the tube, you need to have a head height of about one metre. Now, obviously, not many bikes have petrol tanks of that height. So that kind of led me to ponder, perhaps it's because the flow is increased when there is a vacuum, slight vacuum is pulled um, from the piston. Can't decide whether that's accurate or not, but again, if somebody knows, feel free to leave a comment because I'd be quite interested. 
Uh, so again, part of this video really is to see which parts are interchangeable or not. So here we've got um, the fixing stud holes and they are from the inner edges 44.2. I'd be interested to know again if someone has got an AML 276 or Imperial version, whether they are roughly the same size or not. Excuse me, buying one just to have a look at it. <clears throat> right, so I actually took this one off the bike, which was running uh, this side, uh, because it was running too rich, it didn't matter what I did to it, I couldn't stop it. And if you look at the needles here, I'm getting zoomed in, there we go. You can see one of the needles is quite badly worn, so I'm gonna change that first of all, got a spare one. And again, this is just off of an Imperial one. It seems to work fine. Um, so next, the, the, another thing I'd like to know, if anybody knows this, is how you set the float level on these. Obviously, when it's connected in there, I can see that often, sorry, here we go, on these, there's a, an outlet there, which I'm guessing you would obviously connect a tube to, so you can measure the float level inside. But does anybody know where the float level is supposed to sit? or an obviously way to taste. If I put a tube on there, how I actually find out where it should go. I can't see any obviously markings on these, and yet somebody once said to me that uh, it was always supposed to be up to the bottom or top of the AML logo or somewhere around there. But perhaps again, if somebody does know, um, they could leave that in the comments so that everyone else can read it with us. Right, on that note, I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna go and make, fiddle with a lathe and make some main jets of various sizes and go from there.